Uncle Bill was never a master. He wasn't a master engineer because it wasn't a job he loved. He only did what he had to do. And even though he's talented, he isn't a master in painting either because he didn't take the time during his life to develop his skills enough to master painting. Today, I'll talk about what you can do so that your work life is not similar to Uncle Bill's life. We'll explain how to become a true master in what you love and make a career out of it so that you don't have to see your work life as an obligation while desired. Life happens only on the weekends. This video is based on Robert Greene's book called Mastery. Most people will never achieve mastery, but that's not because they're not smart enough. It's simply because they don't go through three stages that are required to become a master. Stage one, reconnect with your life's tasks. In this stage, you will need to enlarge your concept of work. Sometimes we think there is work and there is pleasurable life, and there are two different things. We work for money so we can enjoy the other part of life. This is a depressing attitude. Work should be something inspiring, a part of your life's task, and not just something you do to pay the bills. You don't need to sacrifice five days a week in order to live for two days on the weekend. Exchanging five days for two days is like exchanging five dollars for two dollars, which I'm sure you'd never agree to do, but yet you agree when it comes to your job where you spend most of your life. Maybe you're thinking you need to be realistic because your passion would never pay the bills. Well, I'm sure you can think of someone or a few someones who earn a living doing it. The reason you end up thinking you have an impossible dream is the voices. They are the voices that you've internalized as if they were your own. They can belong originally to your parents, your friends, your boss, or anyone in society in general. And they dictate a few rules about your life and your career choices that should depend exclusively on you. Commit to yourself first. You can't have something if you think it's impossible. Stage two, apprenticeship phase. We never hear stories about it, but every master you've ever heard about had their apprenticeship face before they became a master. The reason we don't hear a lot about that stage of their lives is that that stage is a lot of struggle, not great achievements. It is super important to find a mentor or company where you can go and learn everything you can. The basic idea behind apprenticeship is this. Instead of spending six months learning something, let's say how to invest in real estate. You find someone who can teach you everything necessary in a few weeks and guide you through the process. Stage three, social intelligence. Simply put, social intelligence is understanding how people operate. On your journey to mastery, you will work with many types of people and without understanding the dynamics of human nature, you can't go too far. Many times, I have seen highly skilled people getting fired or forced to resign because of their low social intelligence. You can become the master at what you do, but if you don't understand how to deal with people, then you will face many problems in your career path. For example, without social intelligence, you will never pay attention to people's names when you meet them because you don't know that a person's name is the sweetest sound to him. Without social intelligence, you will not know that you should address your mentor's selfish interests if you want him or her to help you achieve mastery. Without social intelligence, you will try to show your boss or your new mentor how smart you are, but you don't realize that it can create envy and they will get rid of you at the first opportunity. You should never appear too perfect and outshine your master. Without social intelligence, you will try to look interesting rather than be interested in others. Stage four, mastery. Once you've found your life's task, developed your social intelligence, and your apprenticeship phase is over, the next stage is mastery itself. As you accumulate skills and your mind becomes more active, you must avoid becoming conservative and fitting in with the group. Instead, you need to become increasingly bold, experiment, and be more creative during the mastery phase. In order to do that, you need a dimensional mind. The dimensional mind. You see, they don't care what other people think about their career plans. But once we grow up, even though we find all of that quite amusing, we lose a huge part of our original mind. And what we develop then is a conventional mind. The conventional mind is the part of you that watches a conversation like that and wants to say, 
you shouldn't dream of being a delivery person or a stuntman. It's not a high paying job. No way, low wages and danger. The conventional mind is very used to conventions. It consumes information and passively repeats it and lives according to it. This is what most of us adults do. Einstein did that. He used his skill to come up with something completely new for the time. Da Vinci, Charles Darwin, Mozart. They had an extremely high skill level and they were not afraid to be different and risk new things. They were not worried about what other people would say when they combined skill and creativity. That was when true magic happened. This is the power of mastery.